Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me to Stockholm, uh, the city where I was born and raised. But since a few years, I moved out of here to uh, Vienna, Austria. So this is actually my first time at a conference on Swedish soil since about 15 years, which is super exciting. So thank you very much. All right, diabetes. That's our business. That's what we do um, at My Sugar. But I'd like to start out with a more of a philosophical twist to this, if you don't mind. A woman called Esther, Esther Dyson. She has been an active angel since many years, in, also in the digital health field. And she came out about five years ago saying that well, what she sees now, the trend she sees now, is that all that, like in the 70s, uh, when the PC was developed, that's taking place with healthcare right now. Things are going into the garages, and people who suffer themselves from issues take care of that themselves. And it's exciting. You know, there are, there are these regulations and rules and everything going on, which we have to live up to. But now, that we are digital natives, most of us, even though I may be a bit too old to label my, myself as one, uh, they tend to actually live, be able to live up to these regulations, rules, laws, privacy, and uh, ISO 13485 compliance and whatnot, FDA. It's all doable because there is kind of a system there. And using digital tools, well, Kind of makes sense if you want to make this world uh, live a bit uh, longer lives, doesn't it? It's the way we can scale medicine to people that usually don't have access, or people that can't afford it, or people that need it and can't even reach it. All right, so that's one of the statements I'd like to start out with. The second one is from a chap called Tim O'Reilly. Some of you have read his books, or books by his publishing company. And what he states is that, one of the many statements he, uh, he has expressed is that creating a business and creating something viable, of course, it's about creating value. But what O'Reilly and his friends thought about is that, well, actually, let's just create more value than we capture and make that which we capture suffice. I love that philosophical statement. But when it comes down to it, Paychecks are paychecks, money is money, burn rate is burn rate. And lack of income, well, that's no fun at all. So let's take a look first at what we do and how we at My Sugar create value, and then how we capture it and the business models we apply. Diabetes sucks. That's it. There's, that's the truth of it, yeah? You can talk about, yes, you're able to kick ass, go to space, be a chopper pilot, be a cop, fireman, you can do extreme sports, half marathons, marathons, whatever. Yes, you can. But it always comes with a price. It always comes with a price of investing enough time and effort into taking care of the day-to-day -day therapy of type 1 diabetes. It takes time to establish new behaviors, new relationships with your own, with what you eat, how you do sports, how you do everything. Diabetes sucks because it's a drain on time. You can say that it takes about two hours of your mind every day when it comes to active therapy. Two hours! What would you do if you had two extra hours every day? Pah. I know what I would. But that's not a discussion we'll have today. Anyway, diabetes sucks because it's a time drain. And because it turns your life upside down. It changes a lot, not just for you, but also for your family. It also ha brings this distinct feeling of being on your own. Because who else can get it? Who else can understand what it takes? You're with your doctor 15 minutes every third month if you're an type, active type 1 uh, patient. And you're with your parents and fathers and your father, mother, your siblings, your friends, the rest of the time. And 
often that insight they have, that understanding they have of the psychological pressure and what it takes, you know, it's not entirely there because you have to step into the shoes of a patient to really get it. So we're often on our own. Now, what we set out to do was make diabetes suck less because I've lived it, with it for 31 years, or CEO with, for 18 years, and uh, about a third of the company now has uh, type 1 diabetes. So what we set out to do was use technology to change the philosophy of, the di of diabetes therapy, to turn it into something else, to turn it into something you enjoy and can take pleasure in. So we set out to change, to build an ecosystem of uh, consistent all-round care where you feel taken care of, using mobile tools, using edu uh, applying educational tools, and focusing on motivation. The core tenets of diabetes therapy, as expressed by uh, Gary Shiner, Diabetes Educator of the Year last year in the U.S., are the basic tools, the basic knowledge, and the right mindset. So by focusing on the mindset in every product and in everything you do, it makes the uh, tools and the knowledge much more efficient. And we're soon also going into coaching, which I'm very excited about. Now, at the core of creating a product that people love is making it actually something you enjoy. There's a fine distinction which needs to be made in medical, uh, in, in medical business. Yes, it needs to be medical grade, but at the same time, it needs to be sexy. Because otherwise, it's just another app you won't open again. It's just another system which brings you nothing. So it has to be a pleasure to use. And by being open from our end, by being truly intimate with the therapy and the ups and downs of uh, living with a disease such as type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes, you set a different tone. You can change that philosophy, that mental picture you have or patients have of living with a disease by turning it into something positive and something you can take pleasure in. By being truly intimate, the rest of the lives of our patients, that's what we want to be. It's about love. Now, so everything is boils down to a package of different apps that fulfill different needs, creating an ecosystem. And the MySugar Pro is simply the premium package which contains all of these apps. And that's what, one of the ways we make money, selling these premium features. Now, currently, just to give you some image of traction. Uh, a few days ago, we reached 398, 99, 400,000 customers using our systems. And that's kind of nice. And since then, well, it's been growing a bit further. And so we already see an uptake in 52 countries where we are currently active. And by focusing on the philosophy and not just the pure tool for diabetes therapy, sometimes we achieve our goal of changing it. We have two customers who have tattooed our little green monster on their arm. That, I think, speaks more than ratings and emails sent. That, I mean, we're competing with Nike here, seriously. <laughs> So it kind of works. All right, so the products we have, just a short, uh, brief run through. Uh, Logbook, an app which helps you take uh, care of day-to-day -day life with diabetes. A gamified uh, version, a version of a diabetes diary uh, where you have challenges and monsters and points focusing on just making you smile a bit. You get direct feedback. Importer, a system uses image recognition to read data from the screens on medical devices. Uh, since many of them do not have Bluetooth. Uh, Quiz, uh, an app which simply makes diabetes brushes, it helps you brush up on diabetes skills and knowledge. And the Academy, a uh, web and mobile-based platform for diabetes education, focused on type 2. 
Now, that product has gone through also certification according to the uh, Austrian as well as German uh, diabetes asso associations and has been certified by them as a proper teaching tool. And that yields a few benefits, also in the business models, which we'll come to next. But before, before we go on to that, I need to show you the trailer which we filmed for this product, because I seriously enjoy it and want to see it on a big screen, if you don't mind. Now, according to your blood tests, I'm very sorry to tell you that you have type 2 diabetes. <laughs> Tame your monster. So as you can see... Oh. Thanks, guys. Sex appeal. It has to be funny. Otherwise, we, you won't do it. That's the philosophy of the product. So it's a diabetes, type 2 diabetes educational tool focused on humor and engagement. So, money. Enter mammon. How does one make money in the digital health space? Um, as we started out, it was, we had this theory. We had this theory that industry would be the answer. And so we started with a B2B model and expanded. We started uh, with a B2B model, and that was a theory we had. We uh, then went into B2C to be able to create the value in the B2B, and then we became a B2B2C. There's a lot of uh, abbreviations here, I'm sorry, but the theory was that if we can create engagement, it will be great for companies. Because yes, we could go through reimbursement and everything at once and take a few years before we actually make money, but that's no fun because then you just be burning money for a few years. So we started out with B2B, leveraging B2B through B2C and B2C through B2B. I'm sorry, this is a mess. Yes. <laughs> to make money in the digital health market, you have to apply different models in different countries and different nations. And there are some solid requirements to even be able to enter. And those are pretty basic. We've spoken of them today at length. CE markings, FDA approvals, ISO 1345 certification for the company, uh, de a decent quality assurance system in place. So those are the basic requirements before you can even, even enter the B2C market. Now, how we make money in the B2C market are through service subscriptions. So uh, a customer comes in and uh, downloads an app, and to be able to access the pro features, the premium features in all the apps, you sign up for about four euros a day, uh, sorry, a month. That's it. A cup of coffee. And you get access to all the premium features in all the apps. Now, this quote I've been stating a few times. It actually comes from a guy called Astro Teller at Google X. It has to be medical grade and consumer desirable. Otherwise, B2C market, you have nothing to get there. So we focus on B2C to make it appealing. And then we come to B2B. You see, companies we work with, such as Sanofi, Medtronic, 
uh, Roche, Dexcom, Nintamed, and others. They are able to license our products and also integrate their products, their blood glucose testing devices, their CGMs, into our applications. So that's another revenue stream we have. Now, to get there, you need traction. Remember the story I told about B2C to go B2B? Well, the first discussion we had with one of the biggest medtech companies in the world, we had 200 users. <laughs> that was cute. Um, now, with 400,000, it's a different game. Yeah? So, be able to spread it and build traction and build retention, build engagement with your brand and with your uh, products. Use that to be able to gain leverage in B2B discussions. Because you can create a hell of a lot more value when people love your stuff. And remember, medical grade and consumer desirable, that's the key. So, then we started looking into reimbursement. And we have reimbursement uh, in Austria for our educational platform and the logbook. People that are uh, self-employed in Austria have access to the whole portfolio uh, through the public insurance. Now, to get there, it's a simple train of thought. A type 1 or type 2 diabetic uh, costs society about 1.7k uh, a year if he has no complications. With complications, on average, 5.6k. Now, keeping people healthy for longer, that's a pretty decent thing to do, right? Saves money. Hmm. It's about efficiency. And if you look at the current state of diabetes education, well, in type 2, 53% partake in diabetes education, and 80% do not partake in a second fresh, uh, refresher course a, few, uh, a year or two later. Thus, massive inefficiency. Why is that? Well, diabetes education takes place in the clinic. You have to go there, you have to take a few days off, you have a right to, and you go to the clinic for a few days and get taught about diabetes therapy and what changes you need to make. Yet it's not something which really fits in, day -to -day, in uh, today's lifestyle, is it? So by br simply bringing it online and seeing to it that it fulfills all the requirements and also engages patients, well, that helps. It's about efficiency. So those were the requirements we needed to fulfill to be able to get to where we are today. And I think that Jacob will have many more stories to tell. And I'm really happy to take the questions after Jacob has also given his speech. Thank you very much. Thank you.